David Brewster here with a new episode of Chord Play. This is the Chords of Celtic Frost, and I've actually had no requests for this episode. This is one that I wanted to put together, so I'm putting this out there. And Celtic Frost definitely are legends of metal. They formed in 1984 in Switzerland and literally helped, you know, kind of usher in various subgenres of metal. That includes thrash and death metal and speed metal and doom metal and some, you know, subgenres like that. They released uh, six, you know, albums under Celtic Frost's name. They were originally known as Hellhammer, and then became Celtic Frost. They released uh, six studio albums, three LPs, and various compilations, and eventually became known as Trypticon. So if you're wondering what happened to Celtic Frost, they turned into Trypticon. So in the guitar department, and also the lead vocalist in Celtic Frost, and this is true for Trypticon as well, but Tom G. Warrior, a legendary metal musician for sure, and Tom, you know, is the voice of Celtic Frost and Trypticon, also the guitarist. And he also was H.R. Giger's personal assistant for seven years. And Giger supplied Celtic Frost and Trypticon with some famous artwork. And definitely, there's no question, I love H.R. Giger. I recorded an entire instrumental album as a tribute to him. That was about ten years ago. But there's no question, Giger's amazing. And speaking of H.R. Giger, you know, one of my favorite artists, and I'm sure a lot of viewers out there love his work too. You know, historically speaking, he contributed a lot of famous album covers to various bands, ELP and Debbie Harry and Danzig and Steve Stevens, and there's tons, you know, floating around out there. And he definitely supplied artwork for Celtic Frost and Trypticon. And before I end this little segment here, make sure you pronounce his name right. It's H.R. Giger, not Geiger. He's not a Geiger counter. He's the late great artist, H.R. Giger. So the music and chord-based ideas featured in this episode came from four Celtic Frost albums, and they've released six, you know, studio albums, like I mentioned earlier, and a handful of EPs. So I definitely attacked, you know, some of my favorite riffs and favorite songs. There's lots of power chords at play here, but you have to think of how influential and pioneering a lot of this music was. So anyway, here we go. The opening that's Necromanical Screams from the album To Make Ethereon, a classic like this. <laughs> So it starts with that big slide. I'm just grabbing the 13th fret right there. And then just beat that low E open. And then you're grabbing like this F to C and then that B. Kind of think of that like the flat five right there back to F. Definitely doubled approved right there. Like 
Dave Mustaine's spider cord idea, and that kind of reminds me of what's going on there, even though it's not using his spider cord, you know, idea, but this. That kind of sidestepping power cord move. start hearing um, that A to B flat or A to A sharp and then a B power chord. Let it ring. And then that E, F to D right there and let those chords ring. riff but very influential and I actually saw a clip of Trypticon playing this at the Wacken Open Air Festival. They did an entire set of old you know Celtic Frost which was so cool. Next up is Visions of Mortality. This came from the album Morbid Tales and this totally reminds me of those old riffs that Beavis and Butthead used to chant with their mouth like this. <laughs> Start with that F sharp actually, and then the low E open to a C, low E open, and then this A to A sharp, and then this G to G sharp. riff but a great one to keep your neighbors awake with late at night and it just fits you know spooky season and metal month for sure next up's the song jewel throne from the album to megatherion something like this <laughs> stuff once again but this uh, B to F power chord and once again pummel that low E and then you're gonna grab F sharp and then I'm hearing like this B flat to B kind of slid I might be imagining that but it doesn't really just sound like B after that it sounds like a slid you know like you're sliding into B like that. I could be wrong but like uh, slide and then you're alternating you know F sharp and G power chords after that like this once again pretty simple riff just power chord based but it's those kind of twisted mutant power chords kind of moving around that's a signature sound, you know, in Celtic Frost's music. Next up's the song Mexican Radio from the album Into the Pandemonium, something like this. <laughs> simple but that low E just pummeled and you're sliding that B into C and then it's this E D uh, B to A power chords with that rhythm something like that Up 
next is the song Domain of Decay from the album Monotheist, and that's a more recent Celtic Frost album. That's from 2006, and this is in B tuning. So we're tuned down two and a half, you know, steps for this. Your low E is a B. Way down there. And this is interesting. There's an accelerando happening with this intro part. So this riff starts very slow and sludgy, and then it starts creeping along and getting a little bit faster and a little faster, like this. this you know fingering wise to make it a physical challenge on the fretboard because we're just moving power chords and it's the tuning and the growling distortion that kind of gives it that heavy you know sludgy sound but basically it's like uh, you know an E F sharp to a G heavy palm mute and then it's E A to uh, A sharp right and I was actually using my middle finger and pinky to kind of stretch up there that A and A sharp like that so hit that low E power chord right there. And the next time after that A to A sharp, then you're going to do A to A flat like that. And right there, G to G flat at the end. It's just start, you know, like off to the races right there. But that's a cool riff because it's so sludgy and heavy in the beginning. Next up's the song Inner Sanctum from the album Into the Pandemonium, and this totally has an 80s, like, Bay Area thrash metal sound. It reminds me of Testament, Megadeth, and maybe a little bit of Possessed, but something like this. <laughs> G, G sharp, F to G. Right, like that. Right there, slide that C to B. And up on that E. You're going to pump that E and then F to that uh, B flat right there. So it's... um. flat like that. starts hitting this and you're just climbing up the chromatically F sharp G G sharp A to A sharp like that and I'm hearing the low E occasionally you know kind of scratched in there Last but not least is the song Dawn of Megadu. This came from the album uh, To Mega Theron, something like this.
starts the volume swell on that A power chord like that. And then you hear him spell out, it's a D5 over A like that, like a stack power chord. And then it's A to A flat power chords. Do it again. And do the exact same thing down a whole step. Now it's a C over G like that, like a stacked, you know, C5. G to G flat power chords. You hear this really obnoxious slide out of nowhere. And I'm just kind of targeting F sharp, C sharp, and then that octave of F sharp up there. And then go right back to that D over A. starts right here. So that A, A sharp to A flat, or A, A sharp to G sharp, however you want to think of that. So that A, A sharp, B, and then a big hit on that C right there. big shift in the groove like this. And that open E and that G, A to A sharp. So there's a lot of power chords, you know, in this episode and in Celtic Frost music. But it's what they're doing that's twisted and kind of demonic, you know, power chord progressions and stuff. Really cool and extremely influential as well. All right, that's going to wrap this episode of Chord Play with the Chords of Celtic Frost. Definitely a very influential and important metal band. And if you've been watching my channel, you may have noticed, yeah, I like talking about the famous, you know, big dogs. Hendrix and Zeppelin and Van Halen and, you know, big names like that. But then I also like diving down in the trenches and finding those important pioneers and kind of forgotten legends and lesser known kind of obscure, you know, bands and guitarists and musicians. And Celtic Frost definitely falls into that because they influenced and saturated everywhere. But then their music never really blew up like, say, Metallica or Megadeth or, you know, a band like that. They kind of stayed in the underground and the underworld or whatever. And certain metal bands, I think they actually thrive and do better when they are underground. And they're not, you know, massively popular and on TV or whatever. You know, metal, I think, kind of, you know, it kind of thrives in those dark crevices and trenches and stuff. And Celtic Frost is definitely essential, very important, and commonly overlooked. So anyway, leave some feedback and comments. Please subscribe to my lessons, and I'll be back before you know with more content and material. Thank you.